All right, okay, eyes of fire, 35 millimeter. <laughs> I gotta do a video on this, John Hand, Pulsing Cinema, and I gotta check you one day. It's a Sunday, February 28th, and uh, I've just gotten out of a 35 millimeter showing of Avery Kroon's Eyes of Fire. This is a show, I mean, if this is on my bucket list. I mean, if you, you know, like, if, I could, if there ever was a film that I wanted to watch in 35 millimeter, 35 millimeter print of it, so many questions, it would be Eyes of Fire. And I finally watched it. Uh, somebody, somebody with a, a fucking brain has programmed this at the Draft House. I would never imagine anyone would, would, would program this film. Whoever programmed it, I don't know who, I want to kiss their feet. Uh, this is stunning programming. This is stunning world-class programming, and it's you know it seems very simple pick, picking movies to, to, to see, but uh, Eyes of Fire is deep catalog, deep catalog, deep catalog. It is a obscure film from the early '80s, an independent regional uh, uh, period, a colonial period horror film. Uh, it's being shown because of its uh, similarity and subject matter to a very big film now, The Witch. The Witch, and everybody's going on about The Witch and how it's innovative and never been done before and everything. And if, you're, if you've seen Eyes of Fire like me, you're like, well, what the hell? I've seen this movie, Eyes of Fire. It's like, it's like The Witch, but it's even better. I mean, Eyes of Fire does share some similarities to The Witch. But uh, they, 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 they wildly diverge. I mean, the ba basically, the, only, the, the, the two things that are similar to them is they're kind of like about uh, witchcraft and uh, spirits and weird stuff going on in, in the colonial Americas. Uh, Eyes of Fire takes place uh, on the American frontier in the 1750s, and it's about a group of, uh, of settlers who are uh, being led by this kind of uh, corrupt uh, preacher who go into this valley and are attacked by, these, by this witch who has uh, uh, ca captured control of these valleys, these evil spirits who are trying to consume and, and uh, possess these people's souls. And I just got this thing on Laserdisc. Uh, you know, because the witch, I mean, the, the, the witch reminded me, oh my god, Eyes of Fire, Eyes of Fire, for years. I've done a movie of the day on it, another video, uh, and I, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I just never thought I would see this damn film in 35mm. Well, first of all, I want to get some things out about it. First of all, uh, on the IMDb, it's listed as being... Um, a scope film. It's not scope. It's flat. It's it's a 185 film. I always it always looked like a 185 film. The video transfers. Uh, the, uh, the 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 35 millimeter is beautiful. I mean the look, the richness of the 35 millimeter. Uh, the the VHS is okay. The laser disc is even better. Uh, the 35 millimeter it is in, incredible. Uh, I mean the, some of the colors. I, I used to think, okay, I, you know, when the, this, the, the print that they had is from AGFA, from the American Genre Film Archive here, a local archive, and, you know, watching 35mm screenings of old movies, it's kind of a crapshoot. Sometimes you get the prints that have been, you know, ran across the floor a billion times that, that are just ragged and faded. Other times you get these mothballed prints that have been, that it, it seems like they've sat in someone's attic for 30 years. You know that they played in a, in a, in a couple of theaters, and then someone stuck stuck them back in the in the in the film boxes, stuck them into a corner of nowhere, and they've just sat until Draft House or whoever pulls them out, Cine Family, whatever, uh, New Beverly, whoever pulls them out. And this, and it looks like my, you know, as opposed, you know, with a, with a little bit of, you know, the 35 millimeter stuff, a little black smudges, a little bit of this and round, whatever. Um, it looks like a new film. This is one such print. This is a beautiful print. This is, uh, this is like, you know, I, this is this. This this print looks so incredible. The colors, the richness of it. When I when I watched uh, when I watched Eyes of Fire in both um, in both um, 
uh, VHS and Laserdisc, I always used to th think that it kind of had this kind of diffusion throughout the film. It had this softness to it. It has this softness to Laserdisc, but you're always kind of wondering, what does the, what does the actual 35 millimeter look like? And it always seemed to me that it was kind of soft throughout many parts of the film. You know, it just I can imagine the 35 millimeter being as soft. And this is not a soft film. The the crispness and the richness of of those early scenes in in the uh, in the village area is incredible. Is incredible. Uh, the the depth of color. Now there are there does come some diffusion in in the later scenes where there's the the early rays of light and the smoke and stuff that. And then the the, the day for night. The day for night is so supple and I think and beautiful really. I think there's a lot of scenes uh, on the video where it where it doesn't the the blue colors of some of these day for night scenes uh, like. Um, uh, the scene where Fanny is is captured by those people in the woods, where Nightshade goes in and he looks a, looks across a he looks for out from behind a tree and he sees Fanny on the on the ground and then all those white white dudes around him, you know, and, and they disappear, you know, they look up and disappear. That's that's really kind of bluish in this film. I don't know. I've got to go back and look at my VHS and and uh, make some notes and stuff because I mean it's just. The color of this thing. Um, it's an obscure film. This this is a film that, above anything, deserves to be on, on Laserdisc. I mean, on, on Blu-ray. It is on Laserdisc. It, does, it, does, it deserves the highest quality, high-definition release. I mean, this is a film that just... You wonder. I mean, the the performances. I mean, I love it. I mean, I, to me, the, the, the these period performances. Another thing is the audio, is the dialogue. Uh, when I always used to watch the VHS and the laser, I always thought, man, those accents are kind of heavy. It's difficult to hear what what everybody's saying. And I have to say that the mix on this uh, print was. I would. I could hear. I could understand every single line of dialogue, even the the French. Uh, the, the the French soldier in the the wraparound segments, uh, it, it he you can he, you can understand everything. Uh, so the audio uh, on those VHS uh, and laser releases is a, is a little bit is a little bit uh, dull. And then the and then the the soundtrack, Brad Fidel's soundtrack. You know, I, you know this film is not like The Witch. I and, and it, I mean it it has a, a period atmosphere. And it involves uh, witchcraft and witches, but it's a lot. It's a lot more kind of like nature fair. It's a, you know, so I mean, the the end scenes had, seem to me have have, to, have a little more to do with uh, Ridley Scott's legend or experimental silent film and, and stuff. And just I mean, there's a lot of like, and I I think Laird uh, Himan is during the the, uh, the 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 opening intro. Yeah, I see a lot of George Millais and you know the idea of like stopping the camera and explosions and physical effects and uh, negative effects and it, just, it, it's, it has the, the ring of experimental film and the ending you know which I mean I think the everybody in the audience I think loved it you know I mean it, it feels like it has a slow build but the film really does click, click along I mean it's just so good I mean it's clicking it's clicking it's clicking um the Witch is a good movie, but the uh, Eyes of Fire. There's something just beautiful about it. I love it. I in, in a perfect world, everybody could see this. Hopefully, I, I, I don't. And I don't know if, who, who else has ever ever booked screenings of this. I, I'm sure it's out. I mean, Agva has now a print. They've uncovered this print. You know, some they people need to start booking this print. They need to start uncovering the rights, and they need to get this 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 damn thing on Blu-ray, on high definition, stat, you know, pronto. I mean, this is a, this is an incredible film, and and I thought it was a great film uh, on VHS and laser. The 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 35 millimeter just it really kicks the film up to another level, and it's really. Um, it's it's a beautifully shot, wonderful, wonderful film uh, that really is the the the, the ancient mid '80s video transfer uh, from those home video releases does not properly represent represent what this film looks like. 
Um, there needs a new high definition transfer. There needs to be a new high definition transfer of this thing made. Okay, enough of my ramblings. I, I love it, I love it, I love it, and uh, that's it. And if you have not seen Eyes of Fire, yeah, go, you know, somebody's even, a, there's even been a Greek VHS release I've seen update, uploaded to YouTube. There's all kinds of full uh, full videos of Eyes of Fire on, on YouTube, uh, you know, bubbling around. Uh, none of them are as good as the 35 millimeter, though, man. Man, man, man. Sometimes the laser is pretty damn good, and then you watch the 30, and then sometimes I've gone here and I've watched the 35s that are chewed up and, and, and messed up and screwed up, you know, and you go like, man, the VHS was better. You know, you just go like, ugh. You know, sometimes, sometimes you get that feeling. It's like, ooh, why, I would, would I want to watch a real, you know, uh, clean, analog, colorful print versus something that's faded and red and, 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 and horrible, you know? Uh, but, uh, did I say redded? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh, wow. Okay, I, I need to stop. I, I'm under the spell of Eyes of Fire. I need to break free. On behalf of the motion picture industry, welcome to the world of home video entertainment.